You're on. Can you see everything? I see it all. Okay. Hi guys, I'm here at the Bible study. I hope you're having a good day. Let's see, I got some stuff out of the magazine. My aunt was here today, my aunt and my mom. And uh, my aunt brought me three, I think three new magazines. Yes, three. So let me see. Here's the first one I'm going to read for you. You are richer than you realize. You've got something even better than money in the bank. A dream. You have got something that pays off better than any deal. Determination. You've got something better than dollars to invest. Hope. And you've already found the best investment there is. Your future. Bye. Sure, I'm supposed to go to the store and pick up something. And he thinks he can be back here by the time we get done. Let's see. Let's see. Here's the other one I'm going to meet you guys. It's time to be kind to you, too. Think about it. Here he comes. You're not going to be back if you don't hurry up. Think about it. We, why? 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 What an idiot down here. Okay. Think about it. We often heap blame on ourselves instead of forgiveness. Dwell on our flaws instead of our strengths and expect a level of perfection we hold no one else to. What good does it do? Treating yourself the same way you treat others feels so much better. And a lot of us don't do that, do we? I'd rather, I'd rather be nice to someone else. You know, I like to try and make people happy. You never know. That's what we should all do. We should all try to make someone happy. Like I say, let someone see Jesus in you today. Even if it's someone in your family, a neighbor, anybody, let someone see Jesus in you today. That what you do for them, they see Jesus in you because of the way you're treating them. And keep in mind, you know, if they know you're a Christian, they're going to see if you do good for them, they'll think, Maybe there is something to this. Let me check into this Jesus thing, see what it's all about. But if you, they know you're a Christian and you're like getting out there screaming in their face, fighting, you know, acting awful, they're gonna say hypocrites. Christians are just hypocrites. And some are. It's true, some are. It's sad, but it's true, I've seen them. Okay. This one has um, seven different little sayings that I wanted to read for you guys. You are wonderful and worthy. Never forget that. If anybody says something to you like, um, you're trash or you're ugly, you'll never amount to anything. How do they know? You are God's child. God made you the way He wanted you to be. He made you perfect. He, uh, you are perfect in His eyes. You are His child. It doesn't matter what they say. They must be a child of Satan. Because they wouldn't say that if they were a child of God. They wouldn't say hurtful things like that to people. So remember that. You are wonderful and worthy. Only person you've got to concern yourself with worried about how you are is to God no one else God's the one that matters remember that so just let it go in one ear and out the other when they say something to you something bad just say I'm sorry you're having a bad day God bless you and walk away program yourself to succeed believe your beauty is the kind that lasts your heart. 
I would rather, if you had to live with one person the rest of your life, I would rather live with somebody who has a very kind, giving, loving heart than someone who is a horrible person, but they are the most beautiful person in the world. I don't care about looks. I'd rather have a, somebody with a beautiful heart. Looks don't matter. Even the smallest star shines bright. And remember, if you ask God for something, He knows best. He may say yes, He may say yes, but not right now. And it may happen years later. Um, or He may say no because He knows it's not good for you. Because remember, God knows the future. One positive thought can chase away a cloud of doubt. Dreaming is free. Dream big. It's never too late for you to be who you wish you could be. Never too late. Never too late. Sometimes grace is a ribbon of mountain air that gets in through the cracks. And here's the picture of it. Oh, that's so cool. This guardian angel story. I just seen the clip of a little bird. And this girl says, her dad said goodbye. Because in her apartment, a bird flew in and sat on the windowsill and across from her and just stared and then left. You see that? It's her dad saying goodbye. Some people don't believe that stuff, but I do. I do. I'm going to read the Circle of Kindness now and then we will get started with the Bible study. Okay, this one is by um, Julie from New Jersey. They spread so much joy. There's a small barber shop near my home that keeps an endless supply of dog treats and water for all passerby. That's so nice. Even during the pandemic, when the towns were shut down, the dog treats and water were in full supply. Ain't that wonderful? The little dog on his walk, or big dog, can get a treat and get some water. That's so hot, you know. I've met countless happy puppies at that spot that insist on stopping, just like my Tiki. She's especially happy on those hot, sunny days when she can rest and hydrate before returning home. Yeah, see, that's exactly what I'm saying. That's very nice of somebody to do. Because you know if you're out there walking in that heat, it's as hot where you live, where we are right now. Whew. I feel sorry for them. I'm glad they get to get a treat, and especially water. We are so grateful to shop owners. They spread so much joy to dogs and their owners alike. I wish I knew who that was. I'd write them a letter. Tell them how, tell them how wonderful they are but she didn't say. That's so nice. Wouldn't that be nice if more people thought, you know, that's amazing. That's the nicest thing I've heard all day. All week. I can't get over that. That's so sweet. I'm about to cut that out. Okay, this one's by Yvonne from Virginia. That kind man saved the day. The thud of a flat tire jolted my body. Oh, I hate that. I was in an unfamiliar town, and it would soon be dark. Oh, lady, why did you go alone? I was stranded an hour from the hotel I was staying at, and I had a dead cell phone. Oh, no. Get a car charger. You gotta get a car, char car charger for that phone. I didn't know what to do. Just then, a stranger bounded into the street to guide me in moving my car out of danger. I used his cell phone to call road service. It would be two hours before someone could arrive. Sitting in the dark in a car, somewhere you don't know, 
where you are with a dead cell phone for two hours. Oh my God. It would be two hours before someone could arrive. So the stranger removed the flat tire himself, put on my spare, and called to see where I could have it fixed. I returned safely to the hotel and found the tire service minutes from there. That kind man saved the day for me. Isn't that nice? God sent that man to her. God sent that man to her. That shows you there's still good men out there, good people out there. What a great thing to do. So happy for her because that could have turned out bad. And the last one is by Lita from California. We were happy to help out. We were walking from the parking lot into the supermarket when we saw a young female worker trying to bring in the empty shopping carts lined up in the return chute. I used to have to go out and get carts and stuff when I worked at um, Big Lots. She tried over and over to toss the cable attached to the metal hook, but couldn't get it to reach far enough or to catch onto the handle of the cart at the far end of the long row. Yeah. We didn't have those back then. But seeing them taking them carts like that, those big long row of carts, I'm like, how do they do that? She seemed to be getting worn down and frustrated. My husband is an experienced fisherman. Oh, he'd know them. So I said to her, oh, let my husband give it a try, which he gladly did. Sure enough, he hooked the handle on the farthest cart on the first throw. She was then able to drag the line of carts back to the store entrance. She seemed sincerely graceful, grateful, and relieved as she wished us both a wonderful rest of our day. Amen. See, they helped somebody out and made their day just by helping her get, pretty much just get her carts in the store. I had to get carts and I worked until closed. I would, this was in a, a bigger town. I had to get carts and then I was, um, you know, worked the aisles, you know, putting stuff on the shelves and all that. When I worked at Odd Lots, or Big Lots, that's been many years ago. Okay, let's see. Now let's get into the Bible study. Okay. Tonight's devotion is by Cassandra Tiersma, and the Bible verse she picked out to go with her devotion is 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 8. Now we really live since you are standing firm in the Lord. All right. Now I'm going to go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, and I will read that. I don't know if it's short or long. It's, it's pretty short. So Timothy's encouraging report. And you know Timothy. Timothy is one of the newer, younger apostles, disciples. He's the one that's usually always with Paul. Because Paul is older. He, Paul calls Timothy his son. They're not blood related, but Timothy's a lot younger than Paul. So Paul is like taking him under his wing and, you know, showing him how to do everything. Okay. So that's, that's the thing on Timothy. So when we could stand it no longer, we thought it best to be left by ourselves in Athens. We sent Timothy, who is our brother and God's fellow worker, in spreading the gospel of Christ to strengthen and encourage you in your faith so that no one would be unsettled by these trials. You know quite well that we were destined for them. In fact, when we were with you, we kept telling you that we would be persecuted, and it turned out that way, as you well know. For this reason, when I could stand it no longer, I sent to find out about your faith. I was afraid that in some way the tempter, the devil, might have tempted you and our efforts might have been useless. But Timothy has just now come to us from you and has brought good news about your faith and love. 
He has told us that you always have pleasant memories of us and that you long to see us just as we also long to see you. He's speaking to the Thessalonians. That's why these books are named this. Um, the Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians, because they were talking to the Thessalonians. Corinthians, that's because when they were at Corinth, they talked to the Corinthians. So if you ever wondered why certain Bibles have certain names, that's, that's why they're. For now, we really live, since you are standing firm in the Lord. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy we have in the presence of our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus clear the way for us to come to you. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. May he strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. Amen. And that was 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, guys. Okay, now I'm going to go back to Cassandra's devotion. Okay, Cassandra says, I'm a Chickasaw Indian. And before I met Jesus, I wanted to experience a traditional vision quest spending time in nature on a mountain alone with God. So taking no food or supplies other than a tarp, I spent three days and two nights alone on the mountain seeking God as I offered up my songs, prayers, and tears. During my vision quest, a weird thing happened. I lost a favorite smooth flat stone that I'd been wearing in a medicine bag pouch on a leather cord around my neck. When preparing to end my vision quest, I found the missing stone in the strangest place, pressed against my leg. It was pressed flat into the side of my leg. Back at base camp, I told grandfather, a Christian minister in the Native American church, what had happened. He responded by speaking of a disciple Peter, whose name means rock and how Jesus is the rock upon which God's church is built. Grandfather then gave me a Chickasaw Indian name, which means, oh, or sorry, which means one who stands on the faith of the rock. That's nice. That prophetic name came true for me a few years later when I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Yes. I've always been attracted to rocks. I love them too. I love rocks. But the rock which I now have the deepest appreciation for is Jesus. Jesus is the rock, the best rock. For I know, for I now know what it means to stand on the faith of him, the rock. And your homework. The snack or any grease. Got watermelon, got to cut up. Go outside and find a special stone to display in your home as a daily reminder to put your faith in Jesus, the rock upon which we stand. Now that's a good homework assignment, isn't it? Go outside and find you a special rock, put it in your house so you're, you can see it every day, and when you look at it, you could, it could be a reminder that, hey, Jesus is my rock. You could be having a bad day and then you happen to look over and there's your rock. Like, hey, Jesus made you look at that. Remember, Jesus is the rock. Stand firm. And remember, God is with you. You're never alone. Wow. That's a great homework assignment. Okay, animal devotion. Sherm said he'd be back by the time I was done. Let's see. We only got this left. 
Okay. Um, the devotion is by Amelia Rhodes. And the Bible verse is Hebrews 13, 14. From this world is not our permanent home. Or sorry, I can't read. For this world is not our permanent home. We are looking forward to a home yet to come. And that is so very true. This world is only temporary. This is only our temporary home. You know, who really cares about these places? They're only temporary. Your real home is in heaven. Remember that. And there'll be no sadness, no crying, no anger, fighting, nothing there. No anxiety. Everything's going to be perfect. God will wipe away every tear from their eye. There'll be no more sorrow or pain. Remember that. You've got something to look forward to. When God calls you home. When God calls you home. Because you're still here. Because he has something special. Special work for you to do. And like I say, it may just be a little thing. And you're looking for a great big thing. But it could just be that one little thing that he just needs you to do. He'll lead you there. Okay, this one's called Ducks Out of Water. So as you hear, the animal is ducks. <laughs> okay. After a few days of heavy summer rain, we walked out our front door and discovered two mallard ducks sitting in our front yard. Although we lived two blocks from the river, which is home to dozens of ducks, they never ventured this far from the water. We sat on the front porch and the ducks didn't move. For a good hour, we sat watching each other. The ducks didn't mind our presence and seemed to think our yard would make a fine new home. Eventually, we gave up and went back to our business. The ducks soon realized our yard wasn't a very good home for them and returned to the river and the rest with the rest of their family. I often feel like a duck out of water. I'll find myself sitting in situations and environments that leave me wondering I belong, whether I belong or what I should do. A situation at work that goes against my values as a Jesus follower a family get-together where the conversation turns decisive and hurtful. A movie I realize I shouldn't be watching. There's an element to this life that can always leave me feeling a little bit like it's not really home. The reality is this life isn't really home. Like the ducks that didn't belong in my front yard and had to make their journey back to the river, I am on a journey to my eternal home with God. I will one day make the final journey to heaven. We all will, all of us, if you are saved through Jesus. Remember that. You have to do that to go to heaven. I will one day, we will one day, make the final journey to heaven to spend forever in his presence that's where i truly belong that's where we truly belong when jesus calls us home terms coming until then i will embrace the discomfort on this earth as a reminder this isn't really home this world is not my home i'm just passing through my treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from the heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Albert E. Brumsley, or Brumley. That's beautiful. I'm just like the person that they're homeless. It's so sad. If they're in the Lord, they will have the best home one day. I'm done, sure. So here's the ducks. You like my mallards? Quack, quack. Here's the mallard ducks. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's what I drew. Got it? Go. Okay, guys. I hope you have a great rest of your day. 
Let's bring those souls to Jesus, and God willing, we'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible study. Bye, guys. God bless.